pretty sure that's some snail poop there. You're going to see a lot of snails and a lot of snail poop in this video. This is a closed aquatic ecosystem, and life inside this jar will outlive your children's children. That's a bold prediction, but don't believe me? Keep watching. The contents of this jar are from a creek near my home, and this jar is absolutely teeming with life. These beautiful snails are its largest and most obvious inhabitants. The spots on their fleshy bodies and the gold speckles on their shells are stunning. I'm fairly sure they're bladder snails. And yeah, most of the brown stuff you see in this video is indeed snail poop. But between the snail's digestion and further breakdown by other organisms, it's really not as gross as it sounds. Here's a fascinating creature. At first glance, when I saw it clinging to the side of a rock, I thought it was a leech. But upon further inspection, this is a flatworm. A fairly large flatworm. A whole video could be made about flatworms. They're fascinating creatures. Flatworms are generally omnivores. They can reproduce asexually. If you cut one in half right down the middle, the two halves will each regrow into a new flatworm. In fact, some species will actually do this on purpose. The list goes on and on. I'm just scratching the surface of interesting facts about flatworms. Like this video if you want to see a video specific to flatworms in the future. By the way, I'm really amazed by the clarity of this water inside of this jar. Uh, next to these other jars, which were taken from a nearby river, the difference is definitely noticeable. And by the way, what did I say earlier at the beginning of this video? That life in this jar will outlive your children's children? See, this is a self-contained ecosystem. Add light and make sure it doesn't get too hot or too cold, and life, in some shape or form, will survive basically indefinitely. Some creatures, especially those that only reproduce sexually, such as this bug right here, will obviously die out at some point, but the snails, flatworms, and smaller species such as copepods, daphnia, ostracods, and other microscopic creatures could theoretically carry on life indefinitely. How is this possible? It's really a matter of oxygen and carbon. That's a simplification of it. There's a lot of other systems that go into play here, but see, the plants and the algae in this jar make oxygen. They make oxygen using photosynthesis, using the light, the artificial light in this case, that is the only input into the system. Along with oxygen, they also make carbon-based foods such as glucose, cellulose, lipids, etc. for the other creatures inside. And then the snails, flatworms, etc. use the oxygen, just as we do, to survive, and they create carbon dioxide, which the plants use to create more oxygen, more food, and also those creatures consume the plants or algae, or else consume another creature that already ate the plants. And the cycle goes on and on. But hold on here, what else is inside of this jar? A lot. This is a caddisfly larva. Of all the flying insect larvae that can be found in freshwater, these are maybe the easiest to identify. That's because nearly every species has a quirky habit of disguising itself inside debris from its surroundings. That's fairly unique to the caddisfly when compared to other fly larvae, other larvae that make their home in streams and rivers and lakes. Caddisfly larvae make shells out of sand, rocks, sticks, leaves, really whatever debris they can find, although What's really interesting as well is many species do have a preference for one type of debris versus another type of debris. And then they live in those makeshift shells until they're ready to mature to their adult stage. These are snail eggs. It's common for snails when moved into a different environment such as this ecosphere to quickly lay eggs all over the place. This jar already has quite a few snails especially for, for the size of the jar. So I, I would be worried about, you know, potentially dozens of smaller snails uh, hatching in the next few weeks. But as you can see, it looks like some of these eggs are already being preyed upon by some other fly larvae. 
Actually, this one right here looks like a caddisfly larva. Although it seems to be, even though it is resting on the bundle of eggs, it actually looks like it's attacking something else there. Maybe an ostracod? These two here are actually separate species. I think the one on the right is another magefly larva. The other one, I'm not so sure. Something from the true fly family. Maybe a crane fly larva? Not positive. Here we have some filamentous algae. Literally just algae that grows in long filaments. But that's not all. Inside this tangled mess is an imposter. Do you see it? Right here. This isn't a bit of algae. This is a hydra. And if flatworms deserve their own video, hydras deserve their own series of videos. These are carnivorous creatures that use their limbs, their tentacles that you can see in this shot right here, to engulf prey. They can also regenerate when they're cut in half, just like a flatworm. And scientists are actually learning that hydras might be immune to aging. Like they don't age, they don't die from old age. That's pretty amazing. It blows my mind what lives in such a small slice of nature. My mission on this channel is to showcase how much life in this world goes unnoticed. And as is often the case in life, there is astounding beauty in what's overlooked. This ecosystem is still new. For a few days, I'll probably open the top to allow for air and, and gas exchange. Also, I'm thinking about getting a little more organic matter from the creek, just to give it a little more to work with inside, allow for a little more diversity, a little bit more carbon. I mean, that's really what I'm looking for, is a little bit more carbon for the creatures and the plants inside to work with. The rocks look great and they're natural to the environment, but they contribute very little to this system other than serving as an anchor for the plants and the algae. After I'm done doing that, I plan on sealing this jar up and we'll see how long life will survive. For those of you that are just loving this kind of content, go back through the video. Each shot, I got a challenge for you. Try not to focus on the main subject but see what else you can see in that shot. There is life everywhere in this jar and everywhere in this video. And I'm sure there's some tiny organisms that I missed altogether. If you find something interesting, leave a timestamped comment down below. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you next time.